Using our Excel for our Power Tool for Statistics, let's explore how to build and calculate frequency tables. On my sheet, I have an area where I have some data. So these are some numbers that I'm going to deal with. This is my information. And from this information, I'm going to build a frequency table. So I've just created um, a little area and I have one column that's going to deal with the class, the frequency, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency. Now let me talk about these classes. This is information that quote unquote is given to you, at least for this example. And this means that, well, in this class, anytime that you have a number that's between and including 100 to 149, that's going to go in this class. 150 to 199, it will go in this class. 200 to 249 in this class, and so on and so forth. So eventually, we'll be able to put all of these data points into one of these classes. So in essence, if I have uh, numbers between 100 and 149, I have three of those numbers. The frequency will be three. Now using Excel, it gives us some nice, powerful tools to help us with our data. The first thing it can do is sort. It sorts really, really well. Now what I can do is I can highlight the area I want to sort. <clears throat> now I want to stick with just one column, because that's all I really kind of need, is this one column. And I want to go over to my data on my ribbon and I'm gonna click sort, and I want it from high to low, smallest to largest, so I'm gonna click right there. Now, it's gonna say, hey, I noticed you have some more stuff. Do you wanna expand your selection? I'm gonna say, no, no, I, I, I just want these numbers sorted. I'm gonna say, can continue. All right, so those are sorted from low to high. I'm gonna repeat that same thing for the numbers that are in column B. Go over to my data, click A to Z. No, I don't want to expand it this time. And I'm going to say sort. Now, the reason why I did that is because if I needed to sort all of the numbers all at one time, they'd have to be all in one column. And because I didn't have my data that way, I had to do it twice. First on this set of numbers and second on this set of numbers. Now, they're not all sorted together, but they're at least sorted enough to that where I can tell, do I have any numbers between 100 and 149? I have none. So I'm going to say there's none of those. Now numbers from 150 to 199. I have one, two, three, four of them. So frequency will be four. Numbers 200 to 249. I have one, two, three, Whoops, three. For numbers 250 to 299, I have 251, two. Ooh, look, I found another one. So sometimes it's helpful because I'm kind of jumping back and forth. I'm going to double check my work here. So 200 to 249, 201, two, three, four, four of them. 250 to 299, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might be easier like that to go each column, each column. Okay, 300 to 349, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So four plus six is 10. 350 to 399. Uh, did I count the 384? Well, we'll figure it out in a second. Okay, I got one, two of those. And uh, 4 to 449, I've got two of those. Now, the frequency, if I add this up just by a real quick auto sum, I have 30 values. Now, I don't want to have to count these individually, so I'm going to tell Excel to do it. So I say, uh, do some math, count, I'm literally typing in the word count, open parenthesis, highlight all of this, 
and I have 30. Okay, so there are 30 data points here, and my frequency adds up to 30, so those two numbers match, and I know I have accounted for all of the data points in my frequency table for my frequency. I'm just going to center that just so it looks pretty. All right, so now let me talk about what cumulative frequency is. It's your running total. So I'm going to have Excel create my running total. Now I have to tell it where to start, so I'm going to say equal whatever is in this cell. And I'm going to hit enter. There's no math on it. It's just grabbing the information that is in that first frequency cell. Now the next frequency, the cumulative frequency, is created by saying do some math, grab what's ever above me, and add the next frequency number. Okay, so my running total is now four. Now that I have this first formula done, I just need to copy it down the rest of the way and let Excel do it. And you'll notice it ends in a 30. Indeed, if I add up this column, it's a 30. Those two numbers better match. If they don't, then you've grabbed something incorrectly. So that's how I would make Excel do the cumulative frequency. Now the relative frequency. The relative frequency is going to be the frequency divided by the total. So equal the frequency divided by the total. And since normally I wouldn't necessarily add up this column of frequency, I would have the cumulative frequency. I will select the H10 cell. But if I copy this down, Excel is going to move that H10, and I don't want it to move. So I'm going to hit my F4, which is function 4 key. And once I hit this key, you'll notice that around the H and the 1 near the 10 for the H10, that will change and will add dollar signs to it. So I've hit my key, and now you'll see dollar signs there. This is what it tells Excel. When there's dollar signs, it's always going to do go to this one cell that has the 30 in it. It's not going to ever change the cell, but it will change F4, and it will go F5, F6, F7, F8. I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. That's okay. 0 divided by 30 is 0. I'm going to take that formula and copy it down. And now I have my relative frequency completed. Occasionally, you will need to enter your homework with certain uh, decimal points. So I'm going to decrease my decimal point to maybe four. There we go. And Excel will round for me. Now that's how we do a frequency table if the class size was already given to me. Then I can figure out my the rest of the frequency table by the data that I have. Now. If I want to create the classes myself, because here's the problem. I didn't have any data for the class that goes from 100 to 49, so it's kind of wasted time to actually calculate all of that. It's just wasted time. And because of that, maybe it would be better not to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. Maybe it would be better to, um, or maybe I should say, maybe it's not good to have classes that are just static as in 100 to 149, because my data doesn't fit there. And even having this big block at the end, having 400 to 499, again, maybe I don't want it broken down like this. Maybe I want it to fit my specific data better. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine, using some math, what size my class should be by how many classes I want. All right, so let's say I want not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I want five classes, not seven. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a short calculation, really, really small calculation, and we can even have Excel do it for us. We need to find our 
low value. We need to find our high value and the number of classes we want. This is determined by us. So the low value, remember Excel is very powerful. I want, that means I want the minimum value in my data. So I can say equal min for minimum, open parenthesis, highlight the data that I want Excel to find the minimum value, close that and hit enter. 155 is indeed my lowest data. Now, my highest data equal max, open parenthesis, same set of data. It's going to find the maximum number there, and it's 405. Now, I said I wanted not seven different classes, I wanted five. Here's our calculation. Let me get rid of that highlighting so it's not distracting. Uh, no fill. Okay. So here's my calculation. Excel, do some math. Equal, open parenthesis, take your high value, subtract it with your low value, close your parenthesis, and divide by 5. Okay. So my class size. This is class size is going to be 50. All right, so I am going to steal those labels just because I'm going to be lazy. I highlighted them and I pasted them. Now here's the thing. I have everything I need on this page to make Excel build my classes. I am going to squeeze this over and just say this is my class low value and this is my class high value. That's still all one class but since I want Excel to do the math for me I can't put it in a range of values where it has that hyphen in the middle. Well I can but you know for the math sake I'm not I can't do that for math. So equal this guy, my very first starting value. And then now I'm going to say equal this very starting value that I put in the class low plus my class size. Now I don't want this cell to change, so I'm going to hit my F4 to make it stick right like that. Okay. Now, remember I wanted five classes, so far I have two. Now, I have three, four, five. Okay, that's gonna be my lower boundary of my class. But I still have to calculate my high value of my class. That's okay, Excel will do it for me. Well, the class high value is just gonna be the very next class's low value minus one. So equal, the very next class is low value minus one. Okay, now that I have my formula set, I double clicked, okay, except the last one. I can't do it on the last one. My last one is my high value. This is how we're going to set up when we determine the, when the number of classes. Now we still have to go through our data and count the frequency and um, that, so we still have to do that. So from 155 to 204, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, okay. Well, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> okay. Excel has some really cool features. One is called conditional formatting. And what I can do is highlight my data and I can apply some what's called rules to my data by a condition. I can say, oh, highlight these numbers if they're between 155 and 204. Ooh, isn't that cool? Okay, so conditional formatting, highlight rules between and it's going to ask me what values do you want them between? And I say, oh, 155 
and 204 and then I just apply some formatting like light red there's some defaults here that you can select or pre-programmed and I say okay okay cool while that's still highlighted I can repeat that same thing highlight between and this time my second class is 205 205 to 254 and instead of coloring it the same exact thing I'm gonna color it yellow this makes counting a lot easier right okay that's conditional format yet again it's not too tiresome okay 255 255 and uh, let's see 255 and 304 and I could select a different color, but because this yellow is a nice boundary, it's okay if I repeat the red and dark red. Okay. Next, keeping my still data highlighted, I'm going to do one more. I really kind of only need one more. And this time it's going to be 305 to 354. And this time I needed a different color than the last one, so I'll go ahead and say yellow. And say okay makes this much easier to count and double check myself so from 155 to 204 that's one two three four five beautiful 205 to 254 one two three four perfect 255 to 304 i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten was that the right one? Oh no the third one one two three four five six seven eight and then the next one I counted 10 and then the last group don't count this 30 I have three all right now cumulative frequency first cell is our first frequency the next cell is the one above it plus the new frequency now that we have that set Let's drag it down. Finish that row. 30, beautiful, 30. Relative frequency equals whatever the frequency is divided by the cumulative frequency. Now, if you don't remember how to set a cell not to move, that's okay. You could just literally type in 30, but if anything changes, you would have to manually update that 30. And I don't like doing that. So I am going to click on the cell, hit my F4 to make it stay, and drag down or double click. Okay. And if one of your questions asks you, well, what's the percent? Well, then you can actually go to that relative frequency and you can change it to a percent, expand the decimals, and Excel will show you what the percent is. There's one thing that I haven't discussed yet, and that's class boundaries. What you see on the page are the limits. This is the low limit of each class. This is the high limit of each class. But when we're going to need our boundaries, we need to have no gaps from class to class. How we're going to do that is close the gap. Right now, the high for the first class is 204. I'll just highlight that. And the low for the next class is 205. So you can see there's a gap. And I don't mean by counting by integers. There is no gap, gap if we count by integers. But what happens if our data is 204.1? Well, it doesn't have a place because it doesn't belong in the first class and it doesn't belong in the second class. Now our data isn't like that, but when we're talking about boundaries, we want our data to have nowhere to go but the class that they belong in. So I'm gonna add some room to my table. I'm gonna insert some spaces here, and I'm gonna put in that this is my class boundary. And in fact, this class boundary is the upper class boundary, the upper boundary to the class. And then I also have a lower boundary. Okay, 
I need to spread that out so it looks a little better. And here's how I'm going to do it. I take the second class's low and I subtract the first class high. And I divide that in two because I'm trying to find the midway between those two things. So I'm really trying to find the midpoint. Okay. Well, that's going to equal the 205 minus the 204. And I do have to be careful that I have parentheses around that because it's that result. And I'm going to divide by two. So my midpoint is going to be halfway, and that makes sense because half of one is 0.5. I'm going to have to add 0.5 to the high boundary of the first class to close the gap. So equal the 204 plus this midpoint. And that midpoint never changes, so F4. And I can copy this down. Now I don't want the formatting, so I am going to change it to black font. I'm going to double click, and that's going to take care of all our upper boundary of the class. Now the lower boundary is very similar, but it's not going to be adding 0.5. It's going to be subtracting 0.5 from the low end. So equal the 155 minus the half and then make sure that the half never moves. And now I'm going to finish up knowing what my lower boundaries are. Okay. So I have lower boundaries. I have my class limits, which I have a low limit and a high limit, and I have an upper boundary. And you see it closes the gap. This is 204.5. This is 204.5. Now you might be asking, what if my data is 204.5? Well, for this data, it won't, but if it is, then you just set up a rule to say, okay, if my data is indeed 204.5, then, um, you know, maybe it goes in the next class. But in essence, you won't have that situation. I promise you won't have it. Okay. So we talked about frequency tables and we talked about boundaries. That's it for this one. Until next time, be seeing you.